conducting regular inspections of your commercial motor vehicle is one of the simplest ways to help avoid accidents, roadside breakdowns, and lost road time due to poor vehicle condition. The Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration requires you to conduct a minimum of three types of vehicle inspections. Pre-trip, which takes 15 to 20 minutes and covers the engine compartment and front axle components. In-cab inspection, lights, walk around and brake system check. On-the-road inspections are required within the first 50 miles when a change of duty status is made and every three hours or every 150 miles, whichever comes first. The on-the-road inspection includes cargo securement checks. Remember, if you are carrying any hazardous material, you must check your tires at every stop. Every morning uh, before, while we're getting ready to do a uh, DOT pre-trip, uh, while we're walking up to the trucks, we want to start looking at them. Are they leaning left or right? Uh, do we have any leaks that are underneath uh, uh, the truck? Do we see any low tires? That's even before we uh, tilt the hood and start doing the in-depth pre-trip. We always take the key uh, out of the ignition and make sure it's always in our pocket. That way we don't have anyone getting in the cab, starting the truck uh, while we're uh, uh, looking at the, the, the motor compartment and or underneath uh, the chassis, checking uh, all of our uh, components underneath the truck. From day one, when uh, you obtained your CDL, uh, you were always uh, drilled into our minds that pre-trip, post-trip, pre-trip, post-trip. But uh, the, the biggest thing for the pre-trip is it's for us, the drivers. For one, making sure that we're driving equipment that's safe to be on the road so we get back home to our family safely. And then also uh, for the civilians that are out there, that while we're uh, on the interstates and the highways, that uh, our, our, our trucks are safe for them too. So the first thing that we're doing is we're just checking over the general um, condition of, of this truck. Uh, we're very fortunate that Carter Waters has uh, uh, very nice new equipment so the engine's not real grimy. So we're just checking our, our belts and our hoses. Uh, we're just making sure everything's properly mounted, that broke cracked or damaged and nothing's leaking. We're checking our belts. Uh, making sure that they don't have any more than uh, uh, three quarter inch clay, no fraying of our belts, checking our alternator, making sure our wiring is good, nothing's frayed, and uh, everything looks pretty good from this side. So now we want to go over to the other side of the truck and where we can do a visual and also check the, our fluids. So our coolant fluid, our oil fluid, um, all those important things. Depending upon what, what power unit you have in your trucks, when you pull out your oil dipstick, we're just checking for the normal operating range. Same thing with our transmissions. There are some transmissions we have to check uh, when they're warm, just depending upon what the manufacturer said. Uh, we can look down at our water pump and make sure that it's not leaking. And nine times out of ten, if we do have a leaking water pump, we can usually see underneath the ground if we're, if we're losing some cool off fluid. Um, in this Navistar truck right here, it's very convenient that uh, for our windshield washer fluid, uh, that we can tell that it is full also and it's an easy fill. Um, then we get right into some of our components. So we get into our steering components, our, our steering gearbox, uh, looks good, it's proper mounted, that broke, cracked, or damaged. And our, our pitman arm um, and our drag link are proper mounted, that broke, cracked, or damaged. And uh, our castle nut and our cotter pin all look very good. The suspension components, uh, a few things that we look for on that in the pre-trip is we've seen shiny spots. Shiny spots uh, on uh, commercial vehicles let us know that we may have something that's broken or something that's loose. Um, so here we're looking at our leaf spring hangers, uh, front and back, our leaf springs, and our U-bolts. Everything looks really good on this truck. Nothing's broken or missing or nothing, no shiny parts. And then we have our, our shock, the upper and lower uh, shock mounts, properly mounted that broke cracked damage, and we don't have any leaking of the hydraulic fluid on that. All right, so now we're going to pick up and uh, check all of our brake components. So uh, we're checking our, our air lines, we're checking our air hoses, making sure they're not frayed, cracked, and they're not leaking any air. Uh, properly mounted, then we're going to check our ABS line, making sure it's not frayed and all the connections are, are good. We get and, uh, right into our, um, our, our push rod um, and our slack adjusters. We're going to make sure that they don't have any more than an inch play. And, and with these, um, you know, this is where we chalk the tires, make sure we have at least 100 to 120 PSI. Uh, we, we'll push in our, um, our parking brake, as long as the wheels are chalked, and we can grab a hold of those and make sure we don't have any more than an inch play. Um, then we get right in down to the, the brake linings and the brake drums. Um, no, no less than a quarter inch um, on your uh, brake linings and making sure our brake drums are all safe. We don't have any foreign debris in there and uh, you know, we don't have any cracks. And so now we're going to get into the general condition of the tire. 
and uh, making sure that our tread depth is good, the condition of the tire is, no bulges, no abrasions, no cuts, and making sure that we have a, a pressure gauge. Uh, once we get the, the general tire condition, we're gonna get out and take a look at our rim. And uh, this is where we make sure that we don't have any foreign welds, um, no damage to our, our rim. When these are painted, it's probably good annually to make sure that we take these somewhere and get these re-cleaned, wire brushed, and repainted. So uh, if you're going through a scale house, um, the, the neater that your truck looks from the appearance on the outside, the less attention you bring to your truck. So then we're gonna check our lug nuts and make sure we don't have any teardrop rust marks that would indicate that we had a loose lug nut. And of course, we're gonna check our hub seal and make sure that we don't have uh, any leaks around our, our gasket there. Everything looks really good with this truck. So, uh, so far, we, we haven't found any issues with this, and so now we're gonna go ahead and close the hood. Uh, Bruce, if you'll close the hood for us for the truck, and we'll continue down the, uh, the left side of this uh, commercial vehicle. And then we're gonna check the general condition of the fuel, the fuel tanks, making sure we have our fuel cap, our death cap, uh, making sure that uh, there's no shiny spots on our, uh, our bracing or our brackets for um, our fuel tank. And we're also gonna make sure and, and step on our uh, our rails, um, our footsteps to make sure that they're uh, not broken loose and everything is in good working order of this truck. Um, always checking the condition of our mirrors. Um, we always clean our mirrors before we, we start the day and then throughout the day, depending upon the weather conditions, if it's a snowy day or a rainy day, you may have to clean those mirrors more than once. Just checking the general condition, make sure they're not cracked. If they are, get them replaced and making sure that your brackets uh, for your mirrors are uh, properly mounted and, and, and everything's tight, nothing's loose. So from here, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get in the cab. We're gonna do the end cab checks and we'll come out and then we'll finish down uh, the side of the truck with the pre-trip. Um, so now we wanna do uh, uh, a safe start. This is an automatic. We're gonna make sure we don't have any foreign debris, uh, any items that's underneath our, our uh, fuel pedal or our brake pedal. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, start our truck up. So um, go ahead and let it do all of its diagnosis. Give it just a few seconds here and we'll start it up. We got our foot on the brake. We made sure that our parking brake is applied. Start our truck up. Okay, so um, we're watching our gauges when we start up our, uh, our truck, making sure that the oil pressure rose uh, within uh, two to three seconds, and, and it did. Um, and then making sure all our air pressure is coming up to 120 PSI. The temperature gauge and uh, um, in, the, in the air pressure gauge, everything is working fine. Just depends upon what time of the day you're starting these up. Um, this is a truck that wasn't ran today, so it'll take just a little bit for our air pressure to build. Um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, make sure that our wipers are working, uh, make sure that we got uh, our, our washer fluid, which we do, and we also ch had checked that fluid uh, when we were doing our in cab checks. Uh, we want to check our uh, instrument cluster, making sure our, our left turn signal indicator is working, the right turn signal indicator is working, uh, our bright light indicator is working. Okay, we're also checking our hazard uh, indicator lights, and uh, they're working properly also. Um, so we, uh, this is a good time for us to check our defrost and our heater, make sure they're working. And everything on this truck is working fine. Now. Um, as we learned uh, back when we all obtained our commercial driver's license on how to, to check our brakes and, and, and to make sure that our parking brake, our service brake, uh, and our emergency brakes are working fine, uh, just a quick reminder, uh, when you're checking your, your parking brake, do not uh, slam on the fuel, um, just tug against the truck a little bit to make sure that the brakes hold. Uh, when we're going to check the service brake, we're going to roll 10 feet stop, make sure the truck doesn't pull left or right. Once again, roll another 10 feet, check your brake, uh, nice and easy, no, no sudden stops. Just make sure that the truck is stopping like it should and we don't have any pulling again left or right. Then once that's done, um, we wanna make sure that our low indicator um, uh, buzzer lighter working for our air pressure and then also we wanna check our emergency brake. And this is just a quick recap reminder on how to do that. And that is where we would turn our truck off on the flat ground, um, we want to make sure that we have our, uh, we chalk our wheels, make sure that we're still at about 120 PSI for that, and then um, we would push our parking brake in, keep our feet flat on the floor, 
and we would just make sure uh, with our key, key ignition on, but not the truck running, and make sure we don't have any more than three PSI lost in a minute. And you just have to watch uh, your watch for that. And then also, um, then we would apply the service brake after that first minute, and we had time again for the, another minute to make sure that uh, we didn't have any more than um, uh, two PSI lost uh, in that time frame. So uh, that's uh, a general overview of, a, uh, of our brake check, and our, or our end cap checks. Depending upon where your triangles are, are located on your truck, here we got the, uh, our triangles down here as a part of our safety equipment. And then depending upon the age of your truck, uh, if, you have, if it requires fuses, then you would have those in the door pouch. Uh, but if you have the relays, uh, then of course you wouldn't have the fuses in the door pouch with that. So now we're gonna get out of the cab and we're gonna go continue the pre-trip uh, down the driver's side of the Class B vehicle. We're gonna make sure your ladder, your brackets, and your, uh, the brackets that hold the ladder is in good shape. It's not loose or anything. This is your ladder right here. You get a little hard to pull out. It's, make sure it's all in good shape. Your little steps are not all rusted out and everything. Because you don't want to climb up on this and it breaks when you're climbing on it. That's all, it's, it's a new truck, so it's in good condition. But you make sure there's no cracks or anything. I'm going to go down to your box right here. This is where your hydraulics and everything are. And this is going to make sure your box or the container is uh, probably mounted secure. You see all your little, little mounts, it's all nice and solid. We're going to go on the back, on the bed of the truck. You got to make sure that it's, it's, the truck is not all torn up. This is a steel bed, but if it was a wooden bed, you want to make sure there's not all kinds of cracks in it and wood's not sticking up and uh, stuff like that. You know, anything to make it where it's not worthy to be on, you know, you're hauling stuff off. All your reflective tape has got to be on the side of your truck. And then now you have your, like your cargo box. You want to make sure your cargo box is not all falling apart. And like when you open up your door, make sure your door is all solid. It's not all rusted out. Your, uh, like your hinges and stuff like that and your latches are all in good condition so you don't want the door flying off when you're going down the road. And like the box itself, make sure the box is, is solid also, like the brackets are holding up, it's not all rusted out. Here's your little brackets down here, all this area down in here. There's one on this side also. Your hydraulics are right here, these two cylinders right here, you really can't see them that much, but they're hooked onto the, the bed of this truck. And it, when it, it raises, it'll raise up your bed, and that's so you can see your cylinders, if there's any leaks, anything like that. And it's imperative that there's no leaks in those, because that's what holds the bed up. You know, when you raise it up, and you're gonna do, if you have a dump bed, like this does, all right? And then we're gonna look at your drive shaft back there in the back. Dry shaft is, uh, has, make sure it's poppy mounted secure. There's no cracks on it. There's no stuff wrapped around on the, on the dry shaft that's stuck to it, you know, make it like debris or anything like that stuck on it. And like I said, you make sure your little ends, your couplings, these are your couplings right here, all your the hooks saw you. They, uh, they all have to make sure you, there's no, they're not, you, get, you, like, you can't really wiggle them, but they're, you can see if there's miss, missing stuff, like if there's grease all hanging out of it and you see little pieces of steel, that means that your couplings are wore out on it, your uni, universal joints. And then here you have your leaf spring hangers right here. And the leaf spring hangers are, like I said, they make sure they're all properly mounted and secure. You don't see a lot of dents in them or rust on them, they look like they're going to break or anything. Then you got your leaf spring hangers, excuse me, not the hangers, but the leaf springs, they're all right. These are your leaf, leaf springs are right here. All this, they, go, they go from the front to the back. You have a, a front and rear leaf spring hangers. They both do the same exact thing. They've got to be in good condition. The torque bar is right here. You got the, here's your torque bar that goes to the back. And that's also, that's property mounted secure. And like I said, you don't want any cracks in it or dents in it and everything like that. Okay, then we're gonna slide over to the, your tires. Okay, I'm gonna put the tires here, because you got your ICD. Inflation, condition, and depth. Inflation should be whatever the manufacturer specifies. Because it, usually it's, it's noted on the tire somewhere on here, you'll see it says, there'll be a seal right here, you can make sure it's not leaking. 
it's, make sure your axle seal, this is where your axle seal is. And if this leak, and you'll see right down in here, there'll be um, like some kind of fluid. But these, and then also you're gonna go with your, your rims. They're proper mount secure. And you don't want any wells on them or anything like any cracks, anything like that. And your lug nuts are proper mount secure. Rust trails indicate a lot of times that you have loose lug nuts. And they see, I don't see any on this. These are all proper mount secure. And then you, your air pressure, they're, they're, you stick your little, the valve, if you check your air right there, there's a little valve stems there. You gotta make sure your valve stems are in good condition. And this, now we're gonna go to your tie down straps. Your tie down straps, you have, they're all the way around the truck. And this one, when you pull the straps out, you can't have more than a half inch rip on your straps. You gotta be, you gotta be properly mounted secure, which means everything on this thing has gotta be secured to the truck. And the, and the straps, like I said, they can't have more than a half inch rip on them. If they do, they're not, they're not in compliance with DOT. Nut flap is probably mount secure. And I don't, there's not a big bunch of big gouges in it or anything like that. It's, it's very good shape. It's very, good, very good shape. So it's good. This is your license plate. The license plate should be legible, and it should be probably mount secure. Which this is this is temporary, so it's not the way it should be. But it should be like bolted in here, so that you can't be can't can't fall. Look at your exhaust. Exhaust is probably mount secure. Battery box is right here. And your battery's in here. What you do is you take off your take off the cap here. And you're gonna check and see if your batteries have excessive excessive corrosion on them. That's all your probably mount secure. Everything's probably mount secure in there. And that's your battery box. On this side now we're on the your these are your air air tanks, your reserve, and all that stuff, all your, those all your air for your truck. You want to make sure both those are probably mount secure. This way you clean your truck out every day when you leave at nighttime, make sure you... See, it stops, there's no air coming out of there when you actuate it. And there's another valve right here doing the same thing. And that's, that's to take all the condensation out of your or water or anything in your tanks. All the four tires or two, whatever your vehicle has, you're going to do your excuse me your ICD, which is inflation, condition, and depth. Inflation is like I said, whatever the manufacturer specifies between 100 and 120. It's whatever the manufacturer specifies. The condition is no gouges, cracks, uh, bumps, or any you know busted belts or anything like that. And uh, the depth is 430 seconds. And you can put recaps in the back, but you can't put them on the front. And then you have your brake chambers. I'm going to point them out over here for you. Right here. That's your brake chambers. They're the ones, and then your slack adjusters are right up in the front of it. They're the ones that you can't be more than an inch out, inch and a half out. So here your brake linings are right there. They should be as a quarter inch. And, that's, and there should be no cracks or any kind of debris on them or any oil or anything like that on your pads. And this is your brake lines. You have to make sure everything is no cracks or any kind of leaks on them, bulges or anything like that. And listen for leaks. Your leak springs, they all have to be present, no crack. Here's, here's your other lights. These are poppy mount secure and they're working as you can see. Your lights, your lights, your poppy mount secure. Your, the lens on here is working fine. You can see there's no cracks in the water. Right side, light is poppy mount secure. There's no cracks, no. You know, there's no water in the lens in here, and they both are flashing, so you, both your caution lights are working. No cracks. Make sure all your lenses are in place, and there's no cracks, and there's no water inside your, your lights fixture there. Post-trip inspections are required by the regulations and must be conducted at the conclusion of every workday. Post-trip inspections identify any potential safety issues that need to be addressed before the next driver takes over even if that next driver is you. During the post-trip inspection, you will inspect everything that you inspected for the pre-trip with the exception of any items affected by heat, such as oil, tire pressure, brake shoes and drums, hub oil and exhaust components. The post-trip will take 10 to 12 minutes.